I feel like I have this framework of feeling like I'm inferior. And so it's like I've, I love all the information and I understand it and I can get to a place where I feel a little bit better and when I'm in my car and then as soon as I walk into work or almost any place, it's like it's all of a sudden, it's just like the tension just starts coming up. And so when you're by yourself, you feel more valued and when you're around other people, you feel less valued? Yes. I feel like if I... Uh, well, you know why? It's because, and you're not alone in this, most everybody you know does this to some extent, but when you are looking to others for how they feel about you, you're always in trouble because they're not as interested in you as you would like them to be. And they're not as often connected to source energy as you'd like them to be either. So you get all kinds of negative feedback, not because there's something wrong with you, but because you're counting on getting positive feedback from a place you can't get positive feedback. When, right. when you hear what we've been talking about here today, mm -hmm. and we know this resonates with you, and mm -hmm. you care really a lot about how you feel, now you're putting yourself in a very powerful place because you're now able to evaluate the vibrational relationship between you and you. But when you're factoring in how that person feels and that person feels and how that person feels, you're trying to factor in something that you can't control at all and it's no wonder you find yourself not feeling good. You see, when you first got into this physical body and your mother or someone held you as their object of attention while they were connected to source energy and they adored you, that feels so good. But then you're sort of holding them in a place where they can't be. You say, you have to stay in that place of appreciation and you have to keep holding me as your object of attention. Well. First of all, they're not going to stay in that place of connection all the time. No one does really. And they're not going to hold you as their only object of attention. So the thing that you've been counting on can't be. And so right away, you start feeling a little inferior. Another thing that happens, and we can really feel this happen to you. You want so much, you are an uplifter to the very core of your being. And you want people to be happy when they're around you. And you took it upon yourself to be the factor that makes them feel good. You tried your very best to be the way you thought you needed to be so that they could feel good. And you were pleasing to them a good deal of the time, but you couldn't do enough to maintain their happiness. So you began to feel early on in your life like a failure because they sort of made you feel like you were responsible for their happiness, but mm -hmm. you couldn't make them happy, mm -hmm. you see. So now you have to give all that up. We say, there's nothing we want more for any of you than to hear you say and really mean it, I don't give a rip what anybody else thinks. <laughs> I just want to be in connection with who I am because when you're in connection with who you are, then you're a value to everyone who crosses your path. But if you are not feeling good about who you are in the way your inner being does, then you don't have anything to give the others anyway, you see. When I was reading the first book and when I got to that line about where your inner being adores you, it was just like this rush of love that I don't know that I'd ever really felt that deeply. And what you said, of course you know, uh, was just describing my relationship with my mom who passed in July. And, and now I'm I've been able to have uh, received more information and more come closer to her now than I think I've ever have, was able to be when she was here in physical which is a really neat experience that this has kind of evolved. And well, your attention to her from the perspective that you hold of her now in her pure positive energy place will guide you to greater connection with your own source. But don't replace your mother, even your dead mother, with your own connection to source. It's a good path to help you to rediscover that. But nothing is more valuable than for you to be aware. We've been talking about it all day and mm -hmm. we just must repeat it again. That <laughs> vibrational relationship between how I feel and how I really feel. In other words, that's everything. And so as you care so much about the way you feel that you are able, for example, let's say that you get out of your car and you walk into your place of work. Now give us a description of what you meant, how right away you feel less good than you did. What do you mean? What happens? Let's see, well, my office mate, she's a really dynamic person that everybody really likes and looks up to, but she has a real strong, very uh, 
controlling kind of personality, and it's not in a bad way, and I don't think anybody looks at it as, in a, as in a bad way, but even in her recognizing that I'm much more of a submissive personality, and she tries not to abuse that, so to speak, um, she gets on a roll with what she does and how she is, and I immediately am just, you know, wanting to kind of do whatever I can do to help her or to answer her questions because she's more new to the job. Well, um, the, let us give you something. This is a very normal thing. In other words, if you're dancing with someone, it's nice that one of you chooses to lead because if you're both leading, it could be sort of a competition about what you're going to do next. And so there's nothing wrong with dancing with someone. Esther laughed at herself because if you moved around with Esther, you would say you've never seen anybody more capable of achieving whatever it is that she's doing. Everything she does, she's contemplating how she might do it in a more fun and more productive, more efficient way. In other words, she's constantly changing her patterns. She, she is, uh, Jerry is quite amused because he doesn't immediately, as they moved into their new coach. He didn't try very hard to learn where anything was because he knew it wouldn't stay there very long. <laughs> In other words, he knows that it's going to keep evolving until Esther finds the place that is the most efficient for it to be. And so he's just sort of six back. And, and in fact, he decided to take a more active role in putting things away. And it's been a disaster because Esther can't remember where he puts anything. And, and, as, and, and as she's looking for things, she's constantly finding just a little better place for it to be than where he remembered that he put it. And so, but what we're getting at in her determination to find a more fun or more efficient way to accomplish something as she's moving about and now recently her sister has come and is working at their office and she, Jeannie is like Esther in that she's an uplifter, she's wanting to be of value and so Esther comes rushing into the office, it's an hour before they're getting ready to leave and Jeannie wants to help her and so Esther picks up a box and is going to open it but Jeannie takes the box and picks the opener up to open it. Well, Jeannie can't open the box the same time that Esther is opening the box, so one or the other of them just has to stand and twiddle their thumbs <laughs> while the other one is opening the box. And so Esther relaxed into the submissive role because she could feel Jeannie's determination to help her. And Esther had to really wind her jets back. In other words, it was really an interesting thing. She is so accustomed to taking care of herself and doing what she needs to do and wanting to do that, but she could feel that under these conditions, the best thing for her to do was to relax and allow someone who really wanted to help her to help her. And so Esther just sort of stood back and appreciated and breathed deeply and took that opportunity to think about what she needed next and what she th needed next. And within a few minutes, they were really dancing dancing together in a powerful way. Esther was thinking about what needed to be done and Jeannie was off doing it while Esther was on to the next thing, but it took some adjustment for Esther. And the thing that we're wanting you to hear is you're learning to dance with people. You're not trying to prove your worthiness. You're not in competition with any of them. You're trying to find ways that the best of who you are can co-create together, you see. And sometimes we think that what happens with you is that you feel competition because mm -hmm. you're trying to prove your worthiness through your action or through your energy or through your mind. And mm -hmm. there's no worthiness to prove, you see. So next time you find yourself feeling a little less than because your office mate is performing so powerfully, appreciate her and feel yourself return to your fullness. Appreciate her and appreciate yourself and notice the rhythm that the two of you have got going. And in that deliberate focusing of your own thought, you'll align with who you are and you will return to your power. And as you return to your power, things will occur to you that have never occurred to you before. And timing of things you say will happen in a way that has never happened before. And she, who is an appreciator too, will look at you and say, what has come over you? <laughs> and you say, oh, maybe I'm growing up to be just like you. In other words, <laughs> I've been watching how wonderful you are and maybe you're rubbing off on me a little bit. And then take that opportunity to, to 
blush a little more all over her. I, I've loved working with you and it's really fun watching how good you are at so many things. And when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. <laughs> Flatter her with those words that you don't really mean all completely. <laughs> In other words, you, you have your place and it's an important place. And we can feel that in your statement to us, you're wanting, you know that. You're wanting to say, I want to know the importance of my place, even though it's different than the importance of someone else's place. And no one's in competition for which is the most important place, mm. you see. Esther discovered this. It shocked her with one day. Jerry and Esther have had this thing going as they've been driving these coaches for a few years where when they hook up to leave, they both have a little different ways that they'd like to approach the hooking up and leaving process. But Jerry is clear-minded, he's the navigator, and Esther almost always yields to his idea. In other words, she doesn't say, no, this is a better way, because he really is better at things like that for the most part. And so she lets him go along with that, but then there's a part of her that wants her idea to be a good idea too. And so as they've argued softly and humorously over which is the best approach, and Jerry has won out, as he always does under this condition, Esther is walking up by herself to get in the coach and she's going to pull it forward while he makes sure everything is lined up and she's thinking to herself I hope it doesn't work the way he wants it to work <laughs> and then she laughs because of course she does not want that in other words she doesn't want things to go badly for them she just wants to be counted as someone who knows too you see and what we want you to understand is that there is no competition and she knows that really there is no competition it's not a competition about who's the smartest it's a mutual co-creation about how can we make what we want to have happen in the most possible way, in the most practical way, in the most productive way, in the most joyous way, you mm -hmm. see. And so, but all of you, you've sort of had that competition trained into you. And we think it's because instead of being aware of the vibrational relationship between where you are and who you really are, tending to how you feel, you've been using so many outside factors to determine the appropriateness of your action that sometimes you've lost your place along the way. Mm -hmm. And anyone who feels competition with anyone is someone who certainly has lost their place in that. Because mm -hmm. you, from your non-physical standpoint, state of being know that there is no competition. You know that the resources are infinite and that your environment will produce your new desire and that the infinite resources that are expanding because of your new desire will flow forth to assist you. There is no competition whatsoever. You're not in competition for God's love. You're not in competition for worthiness. You're not in competition for resources. You're not in competition for clarity. You're not in competition for anything. And when you get that, then you start wanting to praise everybody who's thriving in anything. And when you start praising those who are thriving here and thriving here and thriving here and thriving here, the, the experience of your praising and the subsequent alignment of energy that brings you will make you thrive in the things that you are praising, you see. Mm -hmm. Look for success wherever you see it and be vociferous about it. Be enthusiastically vociferous about it. Talk about what's going well. Talk it all up. Compliment everywhere you go, everywhere you go, and watch what begins to happen to your sensation of power.